everybody. Happy Thursday. And since it's Thursday here, I am answering your questions. And if any of you are new to the channel, welcome. And how you get your questions answered is I release a Monday video, usually around 10 a.m. on a Monday, sometimes noon, depends. But around that time, and I'm in Pacific time because I'm in California, um, and you ask your questions below that video because within 24 hours, usually it's like Tuesday morning, I'm in the comments and I'm answering your questions or I pick questions for my video today. Another way is to go on katiemorton.com under videos and Q&A for videos. I think it's Katie's videos, Q&A for videos, and you can ask them there. And that not only means that I'm in there answering your questions and chatting, but there's also a lot of support on the website. So if you're really looking for an answer, I know Olivia is always on there answering things. I know Sandy does a lot of work. I know a lot of people, Yar, a lot of people are on there all the time talking, answering questions. Um, and there's probably a ton more of you that I didn't mention, but that's what makes our community so great is that we're all helping each other and it's amazing. And I have to be honest, I don't think there's a question I've looked at on the website where Olivia has not answered it. So thanks, Olivia, you are all over it. And she has a cute little bunny. Um, I don't know what the word is, but her little picture is like, a rabbit. Okay, so this question, we're going back to our roots. If any of you remember, I specialize in eating disorders. So this question is about an eating disorder and it says, hey Katie, at what point does not eating or binging and purging become an issue? Question mark. I mean, doing it a few times doesn't mean you have an eating disorder, but how long or to what extent does it become serious? This is a question I get a lot. Pretty much the underlying question is how sick do I have to be to say that I actually have an eating disorder? When is it really a problem? It's always a problem. I'm sorry, I know that you're wanting me to say like, you know, not eating all for a little while is okay or binging and purging. I don't know why my voice is like that, but you get what I'm doing. You get what I'm saying that binging and purging is never okay for you. It's not a good thing. Not eating when your body tells you it's hungry, that's not a good thing. Now, obviously there are gonna be times when we didn't think about it and we are waiting for somebody's graduation to start and we we're really hungry, but we didn't bring a snack. So we're like, shit, I have to wait until after to eat. That's not really restricting, that's like circumstantial. So let's just get that out of the way. But this is never okay. It's always a problem because it's gonna start small like that. It's gonna sneak up on you like a fog where you think it's not a big deal. And I'm to I've totally got it under control. I'm just doing this because I'm getting married. I'm trying to lose weight or I'm just doing this before prom or I'm just doing this before my quinceanera. I'm just doing this for whatever reason, whatever you try to tell yourself. Eating disorders are really, really sneaky. They make me crazy like that because it's hard to even get my clients to recognize when it's creeping back in. Because when we're recovered, sometimes we'll be like, well, I just cut back on such and such, but it's because I didn't really feel like eating it that day. Lies. Eating disorders lie. They're so manipulative. Don't believe it. If you're going against what your body's telling you, it's not good. And to reference my DSM, I had to, I might be a little lower because I usually sit my phone on all of my books and my DSM I had to pull out because I reference it sometimes. So, and I will, if you want me to do another video about all of the diagnoses, anorexia, bulimia, and EDNOS, which isn't even that anymore, it's like otherwise specified feeding or eating disorder, give this a thumbs up, let me know. That will tell me if you want me to remake those, because those are like really old videos. So anorexia doesn't even have a time frame. It says that the diagnostic criteria, restriction of energy intake relative to requirements. So what's your body need? leading to significant low body weight in the context of age, sex, and developmental trajectory. So if you're underweight, ta-da, you're not eating. Then if we look at uh, bulimia, because that's this person's talking about both things, it says, recurrent episodes of binge eating. An episode of binging is characterized by the following. So you're eating, you're binging, you're overeating. And it all it says is that the binge eating and inappropriate compensatory behavior, laxatives, exercise, purging, occur both on average at least once a week for three months. So bulimia says it needs to happen for three months. Anorexia is like, if you aren't eating enough and you've lost a lot of weight and you have an extreme fear of gaining weight, you have an eating disorder. So please, I encourage all of you, don't wait until you really can't take it anymore, till you barely can get out of bed or you're binging and purging all day or you're binging all day please reach out. We don't have to wait until we're so sick. There is help available and you are sick enough. There's no like level that you have to be to reach out for some support. The sooner we do, the better. We know that. The sooner you talk to someone, the better. So I encourage all of you to look into your school counselors, 
look into to see what your insurance covers. If you have an EAP through your work, you should look into that and start seeing someone and start getting support because trust me, you're worth it and it does get better. I love you all. I'll see you on Saturday with a journal topic. If you have a journal topic, you can leave it below and then I'll see you on Monday. Have a wonderful day. Bye.